స్పీకర్ శ్రీ నది శేషర్ రెడ్డి గారు టెక్నోక్రాట్ ఏ థింకింగ్ అండ్ ఇంటలెక్చువల్ క్వాలిఫికేషన్ స్టేట్స్మెంట్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ డాక్టర్ ఉదయ్ చౌదరి టు గివ్ ఏ ఫార్మల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీమన్ శేషర్ మరి శశిధర్ రెడ్డి ఆఫ్టెడ్ ఇస్ బ్యాచిలర్ డిగ్రీ ఇన్ ఆర్ట్స్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఆనర్స్ ఫ్రమ్ సెంట్ సెకండ్స్ కాలేజ్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ ఢిల్లీ ఇన్ ది ఇయర్ నైన్టీన్ సిక్స్టీ సెవెన్ అండ్ ఇండియన్ కౌన్సిల్ ఆఫ్ అగ్రికల్చరల్ రీసెర్చ్ మెరిట్ స్కాలర్ ఈ గ్రాడ్యుయేటెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ది ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ అగ్రికల్చరల్ యూనివర్సిటీ హైదరాబాద్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీ వన్ విత్ ఏ బ్యాచిలర్ ఆఫ్ సైన్స్ ఇన్ అగ్రికల్చర్ యూ అప్టైన్ ఏ మాస్టర్స్ డిగ్రీ ఇన్ Agronomy with distinction from Kansas State University, USA, in the year 1973. He held several important positions in the Indian National Congress Party. He was a convener, convener of a task force to study the naturalite problem in the country. The task force submitted its report in the year 2005. He was a member of the Andhra Pradesh State Legislative Assembly for four terms. The M. Sashiran Reddy was appointed as a member of the National Disaster Management Authority at its very inception in 2005. Sri Reddy also served as Vice Chairman NDMA with status equal to that of Union Cabinet Minister. As a member and Vice Chairman, he played a key role in formulating guidelines that would ensure prompt and effective response to cyclones, urban flooding and other disasters. He was a Minister for Environment, Science and Technology in the state of Andhra Pradesh way back in 1993. He was a member of the official Indian delegation to the second UN Commission on Sustainable Development in the year 1994. At that time, he also visited South Africa during the elections there at the, uh, in the era at the end of apartheid. He has been very active on issues like regional development, focusing on backward and remote areas of the country, besides championing the cause of the, uh, the cause of inclusive growth. He was also active on water related issues. Sister Marish is the right Dr. G.V. Reddy, Sri Bala Subramanyam, Dr. K. P. Ramaya, Dr. Sukhushan Reddy, Sri Shravan, Sri Shri Kumar, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am thankful to Social Calls for giving some of us an opportunity to share our views on this very important piece of legislation. This country had suffered the draconian law as all of us today look back and talk about it. The Land Acquisition Act of 1894. For about 120 years, In 150 years, 1894-2014. And I think many of India's socio-economic problems as we face today, this law has been responsible. While it's being introduced a mention has been made about my assignment in the past on behalf of the Indian National Congress. I headed a national level task force to study the Nuxlite problem in this country. I visited different states. We have in this country, about 7 to 8 percent of people who are tribals. But if you look at 
people who have been displaced by developmental projects. Maybe irrigation, maybe mining. More than 50% of the people displaced have been drivers. And how have we been treating them? Like they don't matter. They can do anything with them. They don't have a voice. They are somewhere in far off remote places. If a tribal village does not have a teacher, nobody bothers about it. Neither the politician nor the administrator. And subjected to this kind of alienation over the years. It has resulted in extreme social unrest. Our Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh on numerous occasions described the Maoist problem as the biggest threat to internal security in this country. And the, when we plot the areas of Maoist activities, they overlap with the areas where the tribals live. So it is something drastically wrong that we have done over the years, systematically and continuously, that has led to this kind of a problem. I appreciated uh, the presentation made by Mr. Sunil He very nicely put it that there are three people involved. The people who are going to lose their land, the people who need land, and the people in general. The public who is supposed to be benefited by whatever activity is going to be carried out on that land that is sought to be acquired. I think what the 2013 Act has tried to do is to bring the common man, the people who are losing land to be central to the whole thing. I do appreciate what Dr. Ramaya had to say, that in that form things can become difficult. But have we tried that? Have we applied ourselves? Professor Pushottam Reddy mentioned about how compensation has been paid to different people in a different manner. Just around Hyderabad, dealing with the outer ring road. How people have been treated differently. And who is responsible for this? I'm not talking of Let's not talk about parties, whoever it is. We are talking about governments and how... I was one of those people who raised my voices very strongly against Dr. Raj Sekharit in those days. So let's not talk about parties. Professor Prashant already also mentioned about our visit to Turkey. This was way back in the year 2000. Why is Telangana backward? And what do we need to do to see that Telangana becomes a developed region? This is the central thought that we had way back in 1998. Having realized that Krishna is overutilized, the only option for irrigation in Telangana could be utilization of Godavari waters, we thought it would be interesting to go and have a look at the gap project that was being implemented in Turkey. We have set up the forum for utilization of Godavari waters. I was chairing it and Professor Pushwatham Reddy was very closely associated as the secretary and we, along with some others, visited Turkey. 
There are two big rivers, Euphrates and Tigris. And in the southeastern region of Turkey, there's a lot of similarities with Telangana. A massive human development based regional development project was being implemented. <coughs> they went to this particular dam, they visited all the dams and Professor Pushat already mentioned about our experience while interacting with the people there. The presentations that were made by the officials there, the people who are going to be affected, living in areas which are going to be submerged. We visited this particular Nerechik Dam in June 2000. The pool reservoir level was to be achieved only towards the end of the year 2000. And the entire resettlement program was completed. The colonies were laid, avenue trees were planted, full paths were laid. We asked the people who are going to be who are going to be moving out to these houses. They welcomed this. They said they are happy. <coughs> when people in Turkey can do this. When it comes to mining in African countries, I was told by Professor Thor on one occasion that they have a very beautiful program there to compensate people living in the areas where mining activity is going to be taken up. Prime Minister Modi, in his first year of office, has traveled extensively. I recall that when the Turkish Prime Minister had visited India in the year 2000. They were discussing security related issues with the Turkish Prime Minister. I had made a statement at that time. Why don't you talk of how the gap project is being implemented? Because that is what we require here. India will go and it's bound to grow, it will grow into an economic superpower. Yes, we need to help people who can make it. But development cannot mean merely industrialization and urbanization. We cannot ignore the face of the common man, the farmer in this country. They have 120 crore people to feed and grow. And if agriculture is neglected, the future can be whatever we may achieve by making in India or industrialization will become null and void in the, in the, with the possibility of the turmoil that we will witness. Land is a limited factor. We can't, we can't afford to make it more limited. Yes, certainly I agree with uh, Sunil. We need to look at classification of land use. Why are we not doing it? Nobody has applied their mind very seriously on this. We are converting. In 1993-94, I was Minister for Environment in the Andhra Pradesh government. I had asked the Secretary of Fisheries to give me a note on what is the procedure being followed by people who want to set up new shaped crown culture farms. He said there is nothing that is required. For water and other requirements, they can apply for it and get the connections. Or power and other connections. So they can convert any land into a farm, farm, farm and after a few years of unsustainable farm culture, convert this self-sustaining agricultural land into wasteland. That brings us to the point raised by Professor Pushot already as to what are we doing with the huge tracts of land which are 
being left barren. We need to look at things comprehensively. Land use classification has to be there. One of the things that the new bill introduced by the India government seeks to do is to do away, of course, with the social impact assessment. Dr. Shravan very nicely brought out how relevant social impact assessment is. It's not just the farmers who are losing their lands, but is the, the, the entire rural village economy would depend on how this land is utilized. The other, other factor that uh, this tries to go away with is exempting irrigated multi-crop land and other agricultural land. Different states have on paper put restrictions on what percentage of agricultural lands can be converted for non-agricultural purposes. When we take up an irrigation, if it has to be an irrigated multi-cropped land, there must be a source of irrigation. And that source of irrigation is a result of a project. And we developed a command under a project after investing substantial amounts to build an irrigation project. If the land that is going to be benefited by irrigation from that project is going to be converted to be used for some other purpose, I think there is something wrong in people's the way people think. So we want to move away from the focus and India, not only India, any country in the world. I was a student in the United States. When agriculture production was like to be likely to decline because of bad rainfall in the US. There used to be reports that the inflation is likely to go up. If it can happen, if, if inflation, inflation can go up because of diminished crop production in a country, in a well-developed economy like the United States, what about India? I think the farming sector needs all the encouragement. I heard of people during my tenure as a Minister for Environment when we talked about lands being converted for prawn culture. People in some of those villages ended up without proper drinking water. Even on land which could be made productive once again. Even water was a problem. So I had a colleague in the cabinet who said, but we can always get water from outside. Fine. What is the requirement of food grains in India? A vast majority of our people, the other day I saw a report in the newspaper, we are undernourished because we don't have enough proteins, enough protein content in our diet. The staple food is rice. What is the production that we have? What is the production that would be required in the next few years to come? over a period of time and what is the total extent of rice available in the international market to buy? All the rice that is available in the international market for to be sold will not be sufficient for a, a small percentage of our population. We have climate change, extreme weather events, people are concerned about crop production. This is what uh, Dr. Emma Swaminathan had to say. For the land acquisition bill to represent a win-win situation for both farm families and the land acquiring agencies, it should not erode 
national food security. When we speak, very often political motives are attributed to us, even when we try to be very objective. But certainly, a person like Dr. Swaminathan, nobody can attribute any motives. So let us not be in a rush to push through this. I am not trying to be political, but the only motivating factor for the NDA government to think of this drastic change to amend the 2013 Act is the brutal majority. What can be called a brutal majority in the parliament? And they want to push through this, come what may. I think this will be a great disservice to the country because we cannot move away from keeping the common man, the farmer, center stage and think that development is only industrialization and urbanization. And that to a decision that was taken after prolonged consultations, referred to different committees. The Parliamentary Standing Committee, which was chaired by Srimati Sumitra Mahajan at that time, came out with, rep with recommendations which were incorporated in the bill which was enacted in 2013. So the only thing that I could see is that it's not the lack of consultation. Everybody was consulted, everybody's views were taken. All of a sudden, how did it how did it dawn upon people that it will be become it will become difficult to implement? I am not denying that. But we have to people of this country, the marginalized and the poor, they are the major stakeholders of this country. And no development at their expense can be justified. I think this is what we need to remember. If we have to go through some more problems, let us go through it. When other countries are able to do it, then Mr. Ramoji Rao is able to acquire, and um, other private agencies have been able to acquire land and successfully do it. A little more effort. I am I'm, I'm fully sympathetic with what Mr. Dr. Ram, Mr. Ramaya had to say. There will be problems, but we have to go through that. And I am sure we can find a way out with the, with the present dispensation, with the present arrangement that we have. I think this round table should very strongly recommend to the Joint Parliamentary Committee not to meddle with the existing act. Certainly, changes are always welcome. If there are changes, without basically affecting the spirit of the Act of 2013, if there are certain things which can make administratively or technically certain things easy to implement without changing the spirit of the Act, that should not be a problem and I think nobody will have a problem. But let us keep the common man, the, the farmer, center stage and then because we will become answerable if we try to go through this. We took 120 years to call that a draconian law. But I am sure that if they unwisely try to go ahead, They have options. They can call for a joint sitting after going through the required legislative formalities. But <coughs> let them realize that it will not be very soon, it will not be too far in future. Then they will have to pay for it and at what cost that will be the most unfortunate thing that 
we will save this country. I thank Social Cause for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts with all of you. Thank you very much.